Hey everyone, PJ here, and since spooky season is now upon us, I figure it'd be a great time to talk about today's topic. You've read the title, so you know what it is. From movies, books, video games, to what have you, horror exists in many different ways, but this is all just a work of fiction. Or is it? What if I told you that truth is sometimes scarier than fiction? So sit back and relax as I list off 11 horror characters that were inspired by real people. I'm going to start off with the most famous example I can think of, Count Dracula. Many people already know this, but for those of you that don't, Count Dracula was inspired by Vlad the Impaler, a man considered so evil that even the devil himself feared him. Vlad the Impaler was the second son of Vlad Dracula. He and his brother, Redu the Handsome, were held hostage in the Ottoman Empire as they witnessed the murder of their father and older brother, Mercia. Mercia. Merkia. I have no idea how to pronounce that, but anyhow. Vlad endured a lot of pain and suffering throughout his life, and once he became Voivode of Wallachia in 1448, he was ready to inflict the very pain he had suffered throughout his life onto others. He attacked the Ottoman Empire, massacring thousands of Turks and Muslim Bulgarians. Vlad would often impale his victims on wooden stakes, hence the nickname, as a warning to those who would oppose him. The victims would remain alive for weeks after impalement before dying of blood loss. Vlad would even occasionally drink the blood of his victims. There's more to this guy, but I've got more to talk about, so I'm going to leave it at that. I remember playing this one when I was a kid. Go to a mirror, light a candle, and chant Bloody Mary three times, and the ghost of Bloody Mary will appear in the mirror. But where did this legend originate? Well, the urban legend of Bloody Mary comes from Queen Mary I of England, and became Queen of England and Ireland in 1553, and later became Queen of Spain in 1556 after marrying King Philip II. Mary was raised by King Henry VIII, who was an absolute garbage human being as whenever he'd get bored of his current wife, he would have her executed and move on to someone else. This didn't happen to all of his wives, but it happened a lot. Growing up under this tyrant meant Mary had witnessed a lot of violence throughout her life. During her reign, she would often bathe in the blood of young women, specifically virgins, in hopes of maintaining her youth, which gave her the nickname Bloody Mary. Leatherface from the Texas Chainsaw Massacre franchise, as well as appearing as a DLC character in Mortal Kombat X, known for wielding a chainsaw and donning his iconic mask made of human skin. Surely this lunatic can only exist in the world of fiction, right? Well, if you've read the title, then you know where I'm going with this. Say hello to Mr. Ed Gain, also known as the Butcher of Plainsfield. Ed Gain was a serial killer and grave robber who terrorized the streets of Plainsville during the 1950s, and what this man would do to his victims was absolutely depraved. Gain would flay corpses to make various household appliances out of human leather, as well as carving bowls and cups out of human skulls. In 1957, Gain was convicted but was found not guilty by reason of insanity, and spent the rest of his life in the Mendota Mental Health Institute until his death in 1984 at the age of 77 due to lung cancer. This guy was also the inspiration for Norman Bates in the 1960 movie Psycho. Ghostface, aka the Peanut Ghost, no I am not making that up, is the antagonist of the Scream series, a series of slasher films that pokes fun at a lot of horror cliches. He's also in Scary Movie, but I digress. Anyway, Ghostface was inspired by a real-life serial killer named Daniel Harold Rowling, aka the Gainesville Ripper. In 1990, Rowling murdered five students from both Santa Fe College and University of Florida during a robbery spree, and what he did to his victims was absolutely deplorable. Long story short, he raped and murdered four girls and one guy and horribly mutilated their bodies to put them in various poses. This absolute scumbag was later executed on October 21st, 2006 at the age of 52. The main antagonist of the Child's Play series, the story of a serial killer named Charles Lee Ray who after being fatally shot by the police puts his soul into a Chucky doll. That doll then goes on a killing spree. Believe it or not, this is actually based on a true story. Well, 
Kind of. The Child's Play series was inspired by the legend of Robert the Doll. The story goes that in 1904, a young boy named Robert Eugene Otto received the doll after a trip to Germany. Eugene was eccentric about the doll, even naming it after himself. His obsession with the doll followed him into adulthood. However, things aren't always as they seem. People say that Robert has supernatural powers. The neighbors reported seeing a childlike figure move around the house when nobody was home. Children around the neighborhood reported that Robert would disappear and reappear at random moments. As a kid, Jean would often blame Robert for misdeeds that happened around the house. When Jean got married, his wife was terrified of Robert and refused to share a room with him, claiming that he would stare at her. Robert currently resides at the Key West Museum in Florida, where people regularly flock to see him. The museum also regularly receives apology letters from people who've fallen victim to Robert's curses. So yeah, Robert is still up to no good. He's been blamed for car accidents, broken bones, job loss, and many other misfortunes. So yeah, if you ever decide to visit Robert, I'd recommend not pissing him off. Annie Wilkes is the main antagonist of Stephen King's Misery, which is about a romance novelist who gets abducted and tortured by a deranged fan. Not only was this book based on a fear Stephen King had, but Annie herself is based on a real person. She's based on a real-life serial killer, Janine Jones. Janine was a nurse just like Annie was in the story. She was also just as unhinged as Annie as she has two confirmed kills, but is alleged to have over 60. During the 1970s and 80s, Janine had allegedly murdered over 60 infants and children that were in her care. According to Wikipedia, she would inject her patients with digoxine, heparin, and another substance that I'm not even going to try to pronounce in order to induce medical crisis, which resulted in a countless number of fatalities. Her exact body count is unknown, and Janine is still alive and in prison to this day, and is 73 at the time of recording this video. There is a special place in hell for people like her. May she never walk free again. Good old Pennywise, the leading source of colrophobia in both the 90s as well as the modern era. You may have already guessed by now, but Pennywise is supposedly based off real-life serial killer John Wayne Gacy, known for his alter ego, Pogo the Clown. Gacy would dress up as Pogo the Clown and attend children's birthday parties. However, once you find out what he was doing behind closed doors, this fact becomes a lot more sickening. From 1967 to 1978, he had raped and murdered over 33 young men, with his youngest victim being 14. During his conviction, Gacy painted numerous paintings of Pogo the Clown. After his execution, many of these paintings would be destroyed, while the surviving ones were hung in an art museum. This was subject to a lot of controversy since these paintings were made by a serial killer and sex offender. Regardless, these paintings are still up to this day, and some say you can still hear Gacy's voice coming from the paintings. The Green Man, aka Charlie No Face, is an urban legend from Pennsylvania about an apparition that walks the streets at night. The story is real, but the figure isn't some monster or demon. It's actually a man named Raven Robinson. When Robinson was 8 years old, he tried to climb a tree to reach a bird's nest when he accidentally grabbed an electrical wire which sent 22,000 volts of electricity into his body. The doctors weren't expecting him to survive, but he did, but was left horribly disfigured, losing both of his eyes, his nose, and his right arm. His appearance frightened children, so he hid from the public inside an abandoned house. He would wait until nightfall and then go for walks, which made him into an urban legend. Raymond Robinson unfortunately passed away on June 11, 1985, at the age of 74. This one's a bit of a stretch, but I'm including it anyway, so sue me. The Expressionless is a creepypasta story that, to my knowledge, was posted back in 2013. But with how often creepypastas are copy-pasted all over the internet, it's unclear exactly when this story was published. But I digress. This story is set in 1972 and tells of an Expressionless woman who enters Cedar Sinai Hospital in Los Angeles. The woman had a face that closely resembled a mannequin and had the dead body of a kitten clenched in her jaws. She took the kitten out and tossed it aside and then collapsed. She was rushed to the emergency room, but when they tried to sedate her, she went berserk and feasted on the doctors and nurses that were in the room. All except for one nurse who lived to tell the story. The expressionless woman has never been seen since. 
This picture is often associated with that story. While this story never actually happened, the picture associated with it is real. Kinda. This is actually an art piece created by the late Anthony Armstrong Jones titled Student Nurses with a Waxwork Patient. Yeah, bit of a descriptive title. Okay, this one isn't exactly a character, but rather a video game, but I felt like including it anyway. Polybius was supposedly an arcade cabinet that was located in Portland, Oregon. The game was supposedly so addicting that people would often get into full-on fist fights just to have their turn. Unlike other games, however, this one apparently had side effects. The side effects included seizures, amnesia, insomnia, night terrors, and hallucinations. Men in black suits would allegedly collect information from the machines daily. This went on for a long time until one day the cabinet mysteriously disappeared without a trace. This story became so big that it even appeared in an episode of The Simpsons. The truth is that Polybius never actually existed, although many interpretations exist online, which you can play for yourself if you're brave enough. But while you can never play the original Polybius, which, let's be real, it's probably a good thing, you can, however, play the game that is alleged to have inspired it, which is a 1981 Atari game called Tempest. I couldn't find much information about this, so take this one with a pinch of salt, but the story goes that around the time of the game's release, there was a cabinet that was so broken and glitchy that it was borderline unplayable, and the visuals were absolutely nightmare-inducing. This is allegedly what inspired the legend of Polybius. Annabelle is the main antagonist of the movie The Conjuring, who later got her own movie. Annabelle is actually based on a real-life doll of the same name, except she doesn't look like that in the movie. The real-life Annabelle is an old Raggedy Ann doll. The story goes that in 1971, a student nurse was given the doll as a gift. The doll would act very strangely, and according to a spirit medium, the doll was inhabited by the soul of a deceased little girl named Annabelle. At first, the student and her roommate weren't all that scared of the doll and decided to let it live with them, but they would soon regret that decision. As the doll's antics began to get more and more malicious, the haunting got so bad they contacted Ed and Lorraine Warren, a pair of supernatural investigators. They concluded that the doll wasn't haunted by the spirit of a little girl, but rather a very powerful demon. The Warrens took Annabelle to their museum in Monroe, Connecticut, where she resides to this day. And much like Robert, Annabelle is also said to bring misfortune to those who piss her off. So yeah, I'd recommend not poking the bear. And those were 11 horror characters inspired by real people. Let me know what you think in the comments. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications. And as always, I strongly encourage you to do your own research on this topic instead of just taking my word at face value. And as always, my name is PJ, and I'm gonna go get ice cream. I feel alive now